possibly the greatest doc fest in the world. Thank you, Guardian. Palm Wonderful Presents, The Greatest Movie Ever Sold, is a film that looks at the world of product placement, marketing, and advertising. And the whole film was actually paid for and made possible by product placement and advertising. Ultimately, what we want to try and do is create what is the Iron Man of documentaries. Everything from top to bottom is branded from beginning to end. First time ever, documentary with collector cups. They're going to be on that like a wet t-shirt. Is there a plot? Liz, this is the movie right now. I think the thing to do is go get a client. Can we please get Mane and Tail to be the sponsor? What are the words that you would use to describe Ban? Ban is blank. That's a great question. Because what people don't realize, and I think what the film does a great job of showing, is the minute you get involved with a corporation, with a brand, it's not a 30% chance or a 40% chance or a 50% chance that they're going to influence the content. It's a 100% chance that the content will become corrupted on some level. And the fact that you see that corruption happen on screen, I think, makes the film infinitely more fascinating. And I think, uh, you know, kind of seeing me have to sell out as a part of that makes the film, it makes it work. We want to sell the above the title sponsorship for a million dollars. Is it going to be Palm Wonderful? So does a million dollars come with a 100% guarantee? For me, yes. We're in. <laughs> you see the shift happen. You see that influence. You know, you never see that in any other movie. You don't see that in the Iron Mans or the Hangovers and these other big summer movies that the Transformers, you don't see how once these brands are in, how that shifts the story or shifts the script. And I think seeing that happen here validates the movie. Uh, you know, on multiple levels, because it's it's honest about it. You see it shift. Here's the things you can't talk about. Here's the things you can't do. You will never put Morgan, your average Joe, on a billboard, ever. What if we loaded it with nudity? Yeah, that would help. It's changed my life completely, um, but for the for the better, I think. I think it's it's made me infinitely more aware of how I want to raise my kid, you know, what I want to expose my child to. It's made me kind of much more... I think cognizant of where I want to spend my money and kind of who I want to support or what I want to buy, which you should be anyway. We should want to be a conscious consumer. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think it's I think it's a plus. If you want to live in a box, you know, for your whole life, then maybe you shouldn't see the movie. Where should I be able to go where I don't see one bit of advertising? S to sleep. In the film, we go to Sao Paulo, Brazil, where it was about six years ago, I think, they passed the Clean City Act. And what the Clean City Act did was ban advertising within the city, and within the city limits. And, and the reason they banned it, people are like, oh my gosh, that's, that's such this, what a, communism, what, what kind of communist socialist country is that? And it has nothing to do with that. What the mayor said is we have so many problems, we have so much pollution, we're, we're fighting so much within our city, we have to get rid of the distractions so people can see what's wrong. And the first distraction we need to get rid of is visual pollution. People need to see our city. And so they, so they created the Clean City Act, and so there's no posters, there's no billboards, there's no banners on the sides of buses, there's no ads on tops of cabs, there's nobody handing out flyers on the streets, that's all been eliminated. And once they did that, and they pulled all that away, they cleaned the city. Like, they painted all the buildings, you know, once they removed all the billboards and all the facades that were covered, you know, those were all redone and remodeled, now you can see trees and architecture, and the interaction even between people and the city itself is remarkable. So, and the people who are there, they, they, can, they can't even really articulate it, but they're like, the city is so different now um, that, I, that they're, they're, they, the way we interact with one another, the way we talk, there's a real love within the city because it's almost like people care now that this has been taken away. It's like all the companies said, this is gonna ruin businesses in Sao Paulo. It's, this is gonna destroy the economy. You know what, the minute those billboards went down, people still bought shoes. People still bought cars. They still bought pants. They still went on vacations because just because these things were taken away, they still drank Coca-Cola, you know, even though the 8 million Coca-Cola billboards were taken down. Why? Because it's, the radio didn't go away. TV didn't stop advertising. The internet didn't suddenly vanish along with them. You know, it's just the, the interaction that people had with their landscape was removed, you know, this kind of distraction from the landscape. And, and what happened as a result was the businesses that were there had to focus on being good businesses. So those businesses flourished, the economy flourished, crime decreased as a result over the last six years. So you have to think about what kind of impact are, you know, was this having on the psyche of the community that the crime went down. It's remarkable. If anything could happen out of this movie, I hope there are some cities that say we should try that because I think it would be awesome.